Well, good afternoon, everybody. It is Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Sunday evening, I suppose it is, depending on where you're at. Um, we're an hour early today so that I can attend an Amy's Ink and Crew meeting in one hour from now. So we will go ahead and get started. I appreciate you giving me part of your weekend, and I hope I hope it will have been worth it when you... <laughs> When we get to the end of the hour, I hope you'll not have been disappointed. All right, so here's the card. I gave you a sneak peek of it this morning. And this one um, is using the Merry Cafe stamp set, which is in the holiday catalog. And what's fun about it is that it coordinates perfectly with the coffee cups framelits that goes with the coffee break uh, or the coffee cafe stamp set in the annual catalog. So it's kind of a double whammy of good uh, value. Hey, Jean and Karen and Robbie and Karen. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it very much. Um, just so you remember, when I've got the, the computer off to the side, so it's a little hard for me to see it here um, in my little little space. So sometimes I'll miss you if you come on. Don't think I'm ignoring you. Hey, Susan. Kathy, good to see you, and Holly, I appreciate y'all joining me. Glad you got the word that we're an hour early. So anyway, uh, we'll be using Mary Cafe and the Coffee Cups Framelits, and I'm going to use one little tiny die out of Eclectic Layers and one little tiny die out of the Swirly Snowflakes, and we'll get to that in just one second. So I'm going to set this off to the side a little bit, not too far, or I will completely forget where it is. This is the card. You can see it's got quite a few layers. Um, if you haven't figured it out, I'm a layering person. I like layers and collages and things like that. Hey, Kathy and Patricia and Connie, appreciate y'all joining me. Uh, hey, Julie, how are ya? So this is the inside. Um, yes, I did use the uh, Pick a Punk Pin stamp set again. I cannot seem to help myself. Um, I just really like it, and also the challenge I was playing with called for uh, pumpkins. So, you know, you, you do what you got to do, right? And that is the set that I have that has my favorite pumpkins in it. So, let us go ahead and get started. Of course, we have a matching envelope. And I'm going to sit this somewhere where I can see it so that I have half a shot of making it again. Um, we have... I've done some cutting out, like I always do, a little bit of cutting out of things. Um, we'll have to do a little bit more. But we're going to start with a garden green card base, and this is four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. All of these will be on the blog tomorrow. This is the paper for tomorrow. Oh, Jean, yes, you do. We're going to use those a little bit. Um, I'm not an expert, but we're going to use them. So the blends are pretty fun. Um, and so I think you're going to like them. So we have our card base. I've got a couple of pieces of early espresso cardstock set up as mats for the card front and the inner liner. Then I have a piece of Coffee Break DSP in the wonderful colors, uh, most of which I did not bring matching cardstock or even ink pads for, so that was pretty clever. And then what else have we got here? Oh yes, the center is a piece of Wooden Textures DSP with its own early espresso mat. And then we've got some pieces and parts here that we will get to later. So let's go ahead and set the card base aside and start assembling the card front. Shall we? All right, pull out some fast views. So I've been enjoying my one day off, got all my laundry done. I did it all in one load because, well, you know, there were three washers and there's one dryer and I was afraid that if I didn't do it all in one load, I wouldn't get to the dryer until, you know, midnight. So I did them all together, which is not what I usually do, but it is what it is. All right, so I've just used some fast fuse to adhere that Coffee Break DSP to the card front. Hey, Kirsty and Patricia. I appreciate you guys joining. Um, as I've said, if I don't if I don't acknowledge that you're on, it's just because I've missed seeing it, not because I'm blowing you off. And if you have a question and I don't answer it, please just retype it because it may have escaped me on the screen. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna just mat this DS this wood DSP wood textures DSP on its little piece. 
of early espresso. Now, before I put those together, I want to show you something. I don't know how much you guys have played around with the Eclectic Layers Thinlets, but there's a die in this set right here. This is an embossing die. And if you look closely, I think you can maybe see it on the picture. You can see that I have embossed a couple of sets of leaves on my foil strip. And I really only did two and two. There's nothing underneath it because, you know, hidden. Hello. So, here we go. Hey, Sharon. I'm going to pull my big shot over here and do this. Maybe. I'm going to have to turn it. Hang tight, people. Hang tight. I got some space issues. Okay. So, um, when you use this, you use the same sandwich that you use for thinlets versus, um, you know, with an embossing folder, you would normally take the thin die adapter out to use the embossing folder. But even though you're embossing, you're still using a thinlet. So leave that piece on, and I'm just going to line that up a little bit on the ends. It's not really scientific. Julie, you like your blends. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. They're a lot of fun. Now look what that did. How cool is that? I love it. And then I'm going to just set it kind of off like that so that it looks like it's coming in from the edge. Run it back through. I wish I was one of those people who was, uh, you know, oh, shoot. Uh, you know, Julie, I bet you're, hang on, people. I just dropped it on the floor. Julie, I bet you are a heck of a blendy person because you're so artistic. I'm sure that you are using them well and truly the way they are meant to be used. Mine is looks like kindergarten coloring, I think. All right, I'm going to do one more. Isn't that fun? I like that a lot. Um, shoot, come off of there. All right. We're going to just kind of... It looks a little matchy matchy there, but we're gonna we're gonna deal with it because it's really just a it's one tiny element of this card, not a big. Oh my goodness! Look, she embossed that foil. I I wasn't looking for that. I just wanted something because plain foil, I just didn't want it. Okay, I didn't want it, and so we didn't do it. All right, Mr. Big Shot, get out the way. May need you again. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, Julie, I don't think you did a poor job, and I can't wait to see what you did. Okay, so we're going to put this away because I do know that we're done with him. And now I'm going to take some liquid glue and adhere him to the card front. Now, you will notice that it is the same width as my card front, as the actual card front, as the DSP. And in kind of a departure from my norm... Um, I didn't put a mat on it, and I decided to do that because there's quite a few layers, and this is so subordinate to the rest of them that I just didn't, I really just didn't think it needed it. So, so that was my story. I am sticking to it, and hopefully you're in agreement. Okay, so I'm going to go about oh, a third of the way up the page, and just try to make sure it's reasonably straight. And y'all want to be careful with li with the foil. Now, most things, if you get liquid glue on them, it's pretty easy to get it off with a gum eraser. But I have not had a lot of luck with that. I've even tried with like little alcohol wipes, and it just doesn't look good. It it for some reason it kind of breaks the finish, and I don't I don't like it. I just don't like it. Yeah, Linda, don't jump on your computer. That seems counterproductive. I hope it'll work for you, though. But see, I've got on my screen, on my computer screen, the video is showing um, frozen. So I'm not sure. It could be my wonderful hotel internet. Okay, so I'm using some liquid glue, and I'm going to place my um, matted DSP, wood DSP, right over that like so okay 
All right, now that is all set up and ready to go. Now, I've also cut a stitched shapes framelit square, and this is the second largest, or second smallest, so the biggest and then this one is next. And actually this is a uh, two and an eighth inch square. All right, so again, one of the nice things I think about the stitch shape framelits is that the stitches around it, to me, act like a mat. And so I don't feel obligated, although I do a lot of times mat, especially with a scalloped border, I will, uh, I will use a mat there. But in this case, again, I didn't for the same reason that I didn't on the gold foil. All right, now you guys may recognize this. I think this is a freshly made sketches challenge that I played with. All right, so that is ready to go. That is our card front ready to go. Give that a little push there because I think it was crooked. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to just set that aside for a second. And in the interest of time, I've already uh, stamped the little coffee cup image in Mary Cafe, which is the exact same coffee cup image, by the way, as the coffee cafe is. Um, but I've stamped it in early espresso, and I also stamped a lid, and I cut them out with their matching dies from the coffee cups framelits. All right? So now you're going to see my wonderful, not so great, not so bueno coloring techniques. But I am going to use the crumb cake blends. Remember, each blend. When they come available, there's uh, Bermuda Bay, Calypso Coral, Cherry Cobbler and Crumb Cake, Daffodil Delight, Night of Navy, Old Olive, Pink Pirouette, Pool Party, Pumpkin Pie, Rich Raspberry, and Smoky Slate. And each of them has a light and a dark, and you, you'll be able to buy them individually or as a combo pack. And uh, then there's also going to be a project kit and some bundles, I think, that will be available when you guys are able to order. One of the other things that's kind of fun is it's got a color lifter that actually will pick up the other blends colors. I haven't had a lot of success on it picking up regular ink, I'm quite certain, because this is alcohol and it is water, but it will pick up the, uh, the blends colors. And then it's got a bronze and an ivory that are meant to give you various skin tones so that you can color people or deer, I suppose. So those are going to come. I don't know when exactly. Hey, Amy. It's okay that you're late. I know you're getting ready for the meeting. I'm glad you were able to give us part of your evening. I do. Okay, so I'm going to start by just coloring this whole cup with the light crumb cake marker. And I'm sure there's like a thousand ways to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it. Not because I know anything about coloring, but because, you know, I want to get it colored, okay? Let's just let's just be square up here. I want to get it colored. All right. So all I'm really trying to do is get some color in, and then I'm going to put a little of the dark along the edges and pull it to the middle in an effort to make it sort of look like it's a cup and not a piece of paper. You know, because we want people to think we actually glued a cup to the front of our cards because that's really important. All right. Now, Miss Amy did a really good video the other day about how she colors, and I wish I was nearly as good as she is, but I'm going to take a hint from her, and I'm gonna put some of this dark along the edges. And the tip she had that is excellent and quite true is that it really doesn't blend so good once it is dry. So I'm gonna come right back and I'm gonna start adding the light back over the top to try to pull that color in. And that's okay, it's still gonna, it's still okay, we're still okay, people. Not time to panic yet. Well, I'm not gonna panic at all. If it doesn't look good, it's just gonna not be great. But I'll keep adding color and then it'll all of a sudden miraculously work out. All right, so I'm just going to do the other side. Try to be a little less uh, cavalier about it than I was on the front. So, have I shared? I, I guess I did. Did you guys like the bobcat pictures? Was that cool? 
That was right outside our office building. It was so neat to see that. Um, I just, and then to see the kittens, man, I, I would have brought the kittens home. And that's crazy, right? That would be crazy. Who needs a bobcat cat? But what good mousers they would probably be. All right, so I'm just giving that a little color. And, and you can see I sort of, I sort of suck at this. Yeah. I'm going to leave that be for a second. I'm going to test what I said about the color lifter here and see if I can get it here where I just went cray-cray. There we go. Now, while well, that sets a minute so I can see whether I need to add some more color because I'm really hating how that worked out, but I'll fix it here in a second, I will make our sentiment. And it is from the Merry Cafe, and I have used Early Espresso and Pumpkin Pie ink. So let us make that right quick, like a bunny. Speaking of bobcats and bunnies, all in the same sentence, that is why there are bobcats, because there are a billion and twelve bunnies around. Alright, so with this kind of a sentiment, especially when it's in photopolymer, you can use an ink pad. So all I'm doing is just lining up that top sentiment to um, try to just ink the Hello Fall portion, preferably without uh, that little dot right there, because that is a an apostrophe, not a comma. All right, so we'll put that there. Get rid of my early espresso and pull out my pumpkin pie. And then ink that the same way, just like that. Okay, that should be good. And we'll stamp that on a piece of Whisper White. Mary was trying to catch the kittens. This is no kidding. I rolled the window down to take the picture, and I caught myself saying, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. And then I thought, what in the world am I going to do if he comes? Probably poop my pants. Okay, so now I'm going to just cut this out. I'm going to do it off camera because I'm pretty sure you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the uh, coffee koozie design over the top of it and cut it right out. So, murmur amongst yourselves. Yes, I do be actually believe Finn would enjoy a bobcat sister or brother. I'm pretty certain that the one I got the picture of is the brother, and I think that because he was being naughty. The little, I think the little other one was being very good because she's probably a suck-up older sister. Okay, now I'm just going to take my dark crumb cake blend, and I'm edging the edge of this. Could I have used my Stampin' Write marker? Of course but I'm using the blend because it's sitting right here in front of me. And this is kind of a good thing to do on all of your dies, your die cuts, is just edge it in a color that coordinates, or even in black, because it, it helps it to kind of pop a little bit. Okay. Now, just so you know, on this one, on the lid, even though I cut it out originally. Yeah, I did post, it was the, Julie, it was a couple of days back in place of a Finn fan fix. Um, I, I, I got those pictures and I posted them. So all I'm doing on here, sometimes I just don't want that white edge and this happens to be one of those times. So I'm going to cut the, the white edge off here with my skizzers. With my skizzers right here like this. Alrighty, pretty easy little fussy cut. And then a quick edge with the blender. The blend, the blender, the blend. All right. And I'm not gonna shade that at all. It's just gonna have to be a, a lid. All right, we'll put that away. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dark pen again, and I'm going to go across the whole thing just like that. quiet because all of a sudden I, I can't even concentrate if I'm talking. There we go. Okay. And then I'll come back again with the light pen and do the same thing. How do I travel with all of my stamping stuff? Very, very carefully. Um, Jean, I hope that what they think is that I have somebody else in here <laughs> and not that I'm cray cray. Uh, so, Kathy, I put all of my stuff it kind of depends on if I'm in, going to a place where I'm flying. If I'm flying like I did to here, I will. Um, I have to kind of pare down and use a little common sense and think about what I need. And I typically forget stuff. So what I do is I, I just have two suitcases. And one of them has my clothes in it. And one of them has my Stampin' Up! stuff in it. And sometimes I have to ship things back and forth to myself. I almost always have to ship stuff, you know, mail it, going out, going home, because I just can't keep from buying more stuff while I'm here. And I, it's an illness. I can't help it. There needs to be a 12-step program, I'm sure. But I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. So it's not easy. Um, and there's times I think I'm just crazy for doing it. Unfortunately, I don't think, well, you should stop doing Stampin' Up! while you're traveling. What I think is, I should quit my job. <laughs> See, that's like the wrong the wrong solution to the problems of traveling with your Stampin' Up! stuff. But that's what I think. Because I just, even, even if I said, well, maybe my customers will all still stick with me and will wait anxiously for me to return and would be okay if all I did was post blogs with me just rambling and they would still stay and stick around and be my customers. Then I think, yeah, but you wouldn't get to make cards and you wouldn't be able to do your videos with them and have fun on Sunday nights. And I, I kind of like doing these. So, so for me, it's worth it's worth it. So now all I've done is I've taken some liquid glue and I've just added my um, I've just added my lid to the top there. And I'm not going to worry about that, except that I am, because that's how I am. Sorry, you have to watch me fussy cut this, because I annoyed myself by getting outside the lines, and the lifter wasn't picking it up quick enough, so. Okay. Thank you, Julie. That's sweet. That's, uh... Yeah, I can't, you know, there's days I really don't want to make a card. But then there's really days, don't you, I know that you guys get this, where all of a sudden you've got a card in your head and you just really need to make it. And if I didn't, if I couldn't make it, I'd be very upset with myself. So, so I towed it around. And I caused myself panic because I'm afraid I'll be over the weight when I get to the airport, which sometimes I am, but it's worth it. Now, when I drive, I take it all. It all goes in the car, every single bit of it, and that's wonderful because I've always got everything that I need, and I like that. All right, so now I have a cup that looks nominally like a cup with my less than skillful, <laughs> my less than skillful coloring in there. Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate it. Thank you, Kathy. I'm I'm glad you are. I'm glad that it's good that I bring my stuff. I I like it. All right, so now all I'm doing is I'm putting some dimensionals on the back of my coffee cup here. And I'm going to pop it on the card front. This has been a nice day. I haven't done anything but laundry and cards and watching TV, and I even took a nap. It was wonderful. All right, so I'm going to, it's going to be edged towards the bottom of the panel. 
like so. You can see my lid's a little crooked, but I don't know about y'all, but I've gotten some crooked lidded coffee cups and I have usually spilled coffee on myself. So I actually think that's pretty realistic. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm just going to put some liquid glue on the back of my coffee koozie. My coffee koozie. Has the airline ever misplaced my stamps? Not yet. Nope, 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 not yet. God knows, I hope they never do because, oh my goodness, how terrifying. All right, now this needs to be, Mary, up towards the top. Pay attention to what you're doing. Okay. All right. Okay, so now I'm going to take a piece of my burlap ribbon. I'm going to measure it across. And it's going to be about that long right there and here's my ribbon scissors I'm gonna cut that off like so and I put a dimensional underneath the edge one end this end like so and then some liquid glue on the other side yes Karen it was in fact a pretty perfect day the only downside of it is there's only one of them I wish tomorrow was the same, but it isn't, and that does mean I have to work, but it also means we're getting done what we came here to do. All right, so now I'm just going to lay that across the bottom like so, and leave the edge doing its thing, and once again, set this to the side. And then I'm going to pull out my pick a pumpkin, pick a pumpkin, pick a pumpkin. And I'm going to stamp this kind of medium sized one in pumpkin pie ink. Come here, pumpkin pie, where are you? Is that cliche? Stamping a pumpkin in pumpkin pie ink? And hold it a minute. Patricia, you definitely need to get the Merry Cafe. The thing that's cool is if you've already got the other bundle, you've already got your you've already got your framelits. So that's kind of a handy crossover and nice. Um, this is another one where I do not want the edge, so I'm just going to fussy cut this because it's pretty easy. And you know, fussy cutting, a lot of people don't like to fussy cut, and that's fine. I didn't like to fussy cut either. The trick to learning to fussy cut is to fussy cut. Don't shy away from it. Just do it. All right. And if you can see, here's another little tip. You see this finger? I've got the bottom of my snips balanced on this finger, and I'm holding with some pretty decent pressure the part that I'm the, that is the not the scrap. So that bottom finger under there is helping me to keep my scissors steady. And combined with the fact that I'm turning the paper and I'm back up against the uh, the fulcrum of the snips, if you will, that really helps me to get a good fussy cut. All right. Okay, like so. This side. And then we're going to use, oh, Karen, that's a good idea, tear and tape. That's a good idea. I should use that more. I'm just edging this with my pumpkin pie marker, just so that any stray little bits of white won't be sitting there. All right, now a little more liquid glue to put him on. At a jaunty little angle. Give him a press. And then um, I'm going to take a length of linen thread. My computer just went crazy. Just went crazy. All right, length of linen thread and two lengths of gold metallic thread to make myself a little bow. And I'm going to try to not do what I usually do, which is make my threads too short. 
I don't know if that's just stingy. Maybe I'm just stingy. I don't know. All right, we'll cut that. Put that aside. Get a quick bow with those three lengths like that. Okay. And then spend just a few minutes making it kind of prettier. Hopefully prettier. Hopefully not wonky like that. Oh, that one just went cray cray. Well, might have gotten a little too carried away, huh, folks? Y'all sitting there going, oh, my God, here she goes with the bows. Here she goes trying to make bows. She ought to just acknowledge she cannot make bows. There we go. You know, making bows in public is a lot like doing math in public. Frugal. Thank you, Karen. That does sound better than stingy, doesn't it? All right. We'll get that pulled down. That one went better. I was, I think I was in too big a hurry with that other one. Yeah. Now that's a looking a more better. That looks a more better. Cut off those tails. Put a little dabble do ya on the top of my pumpkin. And let that sit there for a second. Now, while he dries, I'm gonna make some steam. I'm gonna show you a little trick. Now, I've cut one. This is from the Swirly Snowflakes die set, which is in the holiday catalog. And it's I think it's probably supposed to be a breath of air or a breeze. But in this case, it's going to be a steam. But if you cut it with the die on the front, then to me, this isn't steam. This is, I don't know what that is. So, to make this steam, I cut the die from the back forward. And that essentially reverses the steam to make it steam and not a swirly doodle or whatever the heck. So that is my little tip for making steam. And it's gold steam because of course pumpkin pie latte, pumpkin spice latte would have gold steam, I'm pretty certain. And it would probably be sparkly also. So there we go, it's stuck. It'll come out in a second. Okay. You know the best part about a day off? I did not do my hair or put makeup on today. It was wondrous. It was so nice. Oh, good Lord, Mary. Just get the right tool out. Mm -mm -mm. Have y'all figured out that when Mary tries to use the wrong tool, it simply doesn't work? And you might think that's because I'm on camera, but it turns out it's true even, even when I'm just making a card all by my lonesome. Okay, so now I'm going to put a little liquid glue on here. A little bit of liquid glue. Not doesn't take very much. It does take some, so some is going to have to come out of there at some point. There we go. And then I'm going to use my tweezers. And stick him right like that. There. Boom. All right. And now while he's drying, I got one more little element to share. And I'm um, not going to use that thing. I do not peel the, I don't, Karen, I don't um, peel it off. No. I don't. Sometimes it peels off on its own if it's a real detailed die, but I don't do it ahead of time or on purpose. Okay, so this is um, this is this little outline shape from Mary Cafe. I've stamped it in garden green on this little scrap of um, Whisper White here, and then I'm going to fill it in with my Pear Pizzazz marker. And you could, in fact, use the pair, the uh, fill-in stamp that's in the set, but I didn't bring the Pear Pizzazz ink pad, and so I'm using my marker because it's just easier, really, kind of, anyway. And then I'm going to do a quick little fussy cut of these two little guys. How's my time looking? I've got a meeting here. Oh, yes, we're fine. We're finer than a frog's hair. All right, 
that. So quick fussy cut. This one's a little more persnickety than a pumpkin, obviously, but it's still not terrible. So did y'all have a good weekend, I hope, and getting ready to go back to work tomorrow or what fills your days. I, I hope you did have a good weekend. Also, I hope you got the laundry done. Although, you know, laundry and laundry machines in your house are one of those just little things you take for granted. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, it's Thursday and I'm out of underwear. I could just go do laundry. But when you're sharing... So here's a question, y'all. This is a question. If you were building a hotel and you were going to put in a laundry room for your guests, would you put three washing machines and two dryers? Would you? I mean, that doesn't even like make sense to me. And then it even gets worse when one of the dryers is out of order. Uh, so it's like, okay, we have this ginormous, you know, relatively speaking, a ginormous hotel with all these people who are staying for a long time. They have to do laundry because nobody can carry clothes for six weeks, even if they don't have a whole suitcase full of stamping up stuff. And town is 45 minutes away. So you can't just like hop over to a laundromat. So it's pretty critical that if you're going to say you have laundry facilities, you have laundry facilities. Now, to be fair, they don't cost anything. They don't even need quarters. So that's kind of cool. But, you know, what's going to happen when their second dryer goes down? Oh, you can still wash, but what? We're going to hang our laundry in our rooms. I don't know. It just doesn't even make sense. And when I stopped at the desk and said, so how long has the washing machine been out? Oh, it's been a while. We're trying to get it fixed. How hard is it to get a washing machine fixed? And it's like a Maytag, so it probably cost approximately $100. Gee, many Christmas. Amy, I did have to, this is no kidding. I had that, my load washing, drying for seriously an hour and a half, and it wasn't dry. So I had it spread out all over the room to get all dry. It's crazy. Okay, so now all I'm doing is I'm making this little um, embellishment here. It's the last little piece of the card front. And so I'm going to put this uh, right here like this. I should put it in the place it's supposed to be. Duh. And just using a little liquid glue. Like so. And then... You know, people, I could lose my head if it wasn't hooked on to me. I'm just going to cut a little tiny snippet of dimensional and stick it under this one right there because it needs a little bit of support because it's kind of hanging. It's kind of hanging like a hanging chat. Okay, there we go. Okay. And then the final piece... Final answer, Alex, is a pumpkin pie enamel shape from the Brights collection. And that is the card front. So let's set it aside. And then, um, hey, Donna, thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and stamp our inside. I'll show you what it looks like so you'll know where we're aiming. Um, some more of the little leaves and a pumpkin. So let's uh, get our pumpkin on there to start with. Nobody wants, Sharon, nobody wants to see my underwear in the bushes outside. Besides that, there's not a whole lot of bushes, surprisingly. I suppose there are in the front, but that would be kind of nice, right? People drive up to check in on, the su on a Sunday afternoon, and there's Mary's underwear hanging around on the bushes. I think that would be bad form, bad form. All right, there's that, and it didn't get a great stamp, so somewhere around here is my little pumpkin pie marker, so I'll fix them.
So, you guys, have you figured out yet what my very favorite tool is? The very bestest thing I ever purchased was? Have you figured it out? I'll give you five seconds to tell me what that is. Oh, I don't need this. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes, I do. All right, so I've got my Garden Green stamp set out, and, or stamp pad, and I'm just going to put some, a couple of these little leafy doodahs in the corners. And while I've got it out, we'll get our envelope going because I've done the same on the front of the envelope. You guys know what my uh, once washed undies and popped them along the windowsill in my cabin of a river cruise ship. Sandra, that is awfully, awfully... Uh, <laughs> they didn't have laundry, huh? That's too bad. Uh, tweezers and snips. Very, 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 very good answers. And yes, they are high on my list. But one of the best things I ever splurged on, let's, let's narrow it down. I splurged on it, which should tell you that it's not, it's one of those high value things. Think it through for just a second and you'll figure it out. I'm using it right now, actually, to get it. So I've got my Pear Pizzazz Stamp and Write marker and I am filling in this. Figured it out yet? I'm going to look back here as soon as I stop coloring so that I don't color and look away. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm sure. Was your underwear still there, Sharon? Oh my God. Or was it in the drink? Did it go in the river? That's what would have happened to mine. I'd have looked back out there and it would have all been in the river and I'd have been well going commando for the rest of the the rest of the cruise. All right, have you figured out my favorite thing? Best thing I ever spent big money on? Yep. You're right. If you haven't guessed, it's the Many Marvelous Markers set. I just love them. Having one marker in every color is amazing. You can fix bad stamps. You can color when you need to. It's just amazing and it was one of the things that went in my suitcase first because all of my markers were coming done yep definitely my markers okay so now I'm just gonna fast fuse this to its mat right after I find my fast fuse which has gotten disappeared Fuse, get away from me. Okay, here we go. All right, and then I'm going to put another, I'm going to put a enamel shape on these. Not put that on the front just because I don't think I did. No, I didn't. All right, so there's the inner liner. Let me go ahead and quick stamp my pumpkin on the front of the envelope. Yeah, Julie, having, having, it took me a long time to swallow hard and get the Many Marvelous Markers set, but it's been so worth it. So worth it. So between that and making sure that we have a refill for every color of stamp pad that we have, then you're kind of color color covered if you would. All right, so there's the front of the envelope. Let's get this finished up and then I'll put the card together and we'll be all done, folks. We're gonna use some more of the uh, Coffee Break DSP. I just bought four new packs of DSP. I took advantage of the buy three, get one sale. I would highly encourage you to do that. It's kind of cool that there's papers in it from the holiday catalog. I don't know that I've seen that before, where a current uh, mini was was being um, included in a sale like that. So that's kind of cool. And of course, there's some things from the annual catalog. 
And so that's kind of nice. So I got some more of this because I hadn't brought any with me. But, and I got more Painted Autumn because why wouldn't I have more of that? And I got some Be Merry DSP because I hadn't brought any of that either. Thinking well ahead. That's it. Planning is my forte. And then I also got, uh, what else did I get? Oh, and I bought another pack of the around, Christmas Around the World paper so that I'd have more of that beautiful plaid. Yes. All right. Yeah, so Julie, what I did is when I started thinking I needed to stock up, every time I would place an order when I had Stampin' Rewards or whatever, I'd buy another couple of refills until finally my, my, uh, my holder was complete and filled up. And it's nice to have. And I even, when I came this time, every every color of um, ink pad I brought, I brought its refill just in case I was getting low. I didn't want to have two dry ink pads. Okay, so now I'm just putting this into my garden green card base. And I'm going to pop my card front on with dimensionals. I think I did that. Where in the world did my card go? Oh. <laughs> I don't even know what I just did. That's very bizarre, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, hang on. I've just bamboozled myself, people. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, never mind. I didn't screw it up like I thought I did. Okay, we're still good, we're still good. Everything's fine, y'all, don't panic. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm cracking myself up. Let's blame it on the altitude, shall we? You know what I thought I just did there, right? Goofy, goofy girl. I know, Julie, it's already sitting at my house. Huh. I, I bought it as soon as they sent the, the email. And yes, Karen, it will help me get to the Greek Isles. I'm going to Greece. I know I am. I'm hoping I am. Well, I hope I am. I don't know I am, of course. That's crazy. But I hope I am. <laughs> Karen, if you ever come make stamps with me, we'll be sure to stop at, at Walmart and get some Depends so that you don't pee your pants. I'm not sure I'm very funny at sea level. That's the thing. All right, and there we go. All right, one each. Hello fall, Mary Cafe, with a little assist from Pick a Pumpkin and some Coffee Break DSP, not to mention the eclectic layers embossing dye, and one breath of wind that is now some swirly, goldy, flaky, flickery, glittery steam. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you will make this card, and I hope I will see you next Sunday. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, guys. Bye.